In science, we start by sorting and grouping different kinds of materials, go on to living organisms, plants, animals, but grouping and sorting is a really important skill in science and eventually it leads to something called classification where we can classify different things into very specific scientific groups and it's really important that we get this skill. Now we can sort materials according to many different properties. We can sort them according to the physical properties, the chemical properties, lots of different things. Now if we look at these materials here, I'm using these because these are easy to use and we can see them quite clearly. Immediately, if I said to you, how are you going to group these? You might say colour. You might say, oh yeah, I'd put all the green ones together and all the orange ones and the pink ones and the red ones and they would be nicely grouped according to colour. The problem with that is that this is a green one, but this one's got like tinsley little rough bits on it, if you can see that. But this one's nice and smooth. This one's orange, and so is this one. But this one's tiny, and this one's much bigger. So their use would be very different. So in science, as we progress and we become more scientific, it's very rare that we actually use colour as a property of a material. Because colour really, you could have a pink chair or a pink helicopter. They'd be very different. The properties would be different. The uses would be different. And so we very rarely use the colour to separate or to organise different things, different objects. But it's a good starting place. It gets us used to it. And we could just sort them into piles and groups like we did just then. Or if you're at home and you've got something like this, bits of fluff, bits of pom-poms like this that I just bought from a craft shop, not very expensive. Or you might use little wound up bits of cotton or wool. It's up to you. A fun way to sort these, make sure no one's got breathing problems, asthma, anything like that. Make sure you ask the people at home if it's okay to do this. You can do it. Have a really fun activity. Now you can time yourselves using your smartphone or a clock or if you've got a stopwatch or something. You could use a, a sand timer where you just tip it over and by the time it runs out you've got to have finished and see how many you can collect. So if you had some kind of time and you might say how many can you pick up in 30 seconds and they might go oh but you can only do one at a time how many can you pick up? Three. Or you could make it really good fun and you could use a straw and you could go one. Two. And it's a good way, it's good fun. Record your results. Mum, dad, sister, brother, auntie, nana, Jean, whoever. How many did she pick up? Who won? Who could pick the most up? And that's just a fun way of sorting different things into different categories. You can then look and go, oh, all those are white. Or you could say, all those are small because I'm old and I'm not very good. It makes me feel a bit dizzy picking things up using a straw. And so all mine might be small or not. But that's just a fun activity to play at home to get you interested get your brain thinking, get you motivated. Don't forget your table of results though. It's all scientific evidence. We want to know who's won, but you have to prove it.